everybody. So in this video, we are going to be looking at the inequalities of wealth in the 1920s. So, so far, we've had a look at the boom. We've had a look at mass production and how that was positive for the American economy. We've had a look at how the government helped with their non-intervention. And we did allude to in the last video how that would actually cause quite a few problems because if the government isn't getting involved, it's all very well and good for the people who are doing well. But for the people who aren't doing so well out of the boom, there's going to be probably a lot of problems. So we're going to have a look at sort of we'll start off by talking about again who did prosper and then we're going to have a look at some sources do a bit of source analysis to see what was going on and where the inequalities were. So we know that because of the boom businesses did really well so businessmen were running the businesses in the way that they want to the government had a laissez-faire policy remember and they didn't really get involved because of the tariffs so namely the Ford, Ford McCombney tariff we looked at in the last video and um, there were tariffs and duties import duties put on things that were brought in from abroad which meant that a lot of people um, actually bought American products so that money was going back to American businesses and the cycle of prosperity was going and going. So businessmen and people who are involved in business, people who work in those industries are prospering. Other people are not prospering as much. So one of the main groups that we're going to have a look at, for example, is farmers. So in World War One, farmers were making a lot of money because the Americans needed food and they were also selling food to consumers abroad. However, when World War I ended and that demand fell, they were still making that amount of product. And the more product you've got of something, the less it costs, which is like for now, for example, the price of oil is going up um, exponentially because there isn't as much of it around. If we had more oil, the price to fill your car up would be lower than it currently is. So when they've got so much wheat and so much of this product that farmers are making, they are actually going to struggle <clears throat> to sell it. So the price of it is going to drop and therefore farmers aren't going to earn as much money. So let's have a look a bit deeper into um, what is going on in the different areas then. So not all industries boomed. So we've got coal, uh, coal, coal, coal and textiles. That was a mixture of uh, coal and oil then they didn't prosper. So the average mon um, monthly income of New York bricklayers in 1929 was $320. Coal miners were only earning $103 per month. And that is just because of the demand for the products. So for the demand of people building and making these new factories, there was much more demand for that than there was for coal at that time. <clears throat> So um, because of American import tariffs and their, uh, and their products, many other countries put customs duties on American goods. So this is what we talked about yesterday uh, sorry, the, in the last video with our um, chocolate bar. So because America had said, right, well, if you want to bring your money in, we're going to your products in, we're going to charge you. Everybody else did the same to America. So if they were trying to sell abroad, if their market wasn't in the USA, if they're trying to sell abroad, they're going to be hit with heavy fees to do that. And that meant that some industries um, who would have sold to abroad as their main place weren't going to do well. So agriculture then, farming, this is what we were just talking about. So it was a constant struggle against poverty. And this is an important word because we talk about the boom and we talk about prosperity. The opposite of prosperity is austerity. OK, and poverty. And that's what a lot of people were actually suffering in the 1920s. So during the First World War, farmers had been encouraged to grow as much food as they could. They continued to do this in the 1920s until they had produced more cotton and wheat than they could sell. So obviously they're working them for absolutely nothing. They've got all this, all these goods that are not going to last for very long and they're going to lose all of that money and that income that they were having. So prices dropped. Farmers lived in unhygienic conditions in tin shacks without electricity or running water. Now, that's a massive contrast to what we were talking about yesterday, wasn't it? With all of these, um, these prosperous new people, new classes of people who can afford to buy washing machines and hoovers and all these kinds of things. You've then got people who were living in tin shacks. So there's, there's a massive contrast here. So in 1929, the average monthly income with a skill, of a skilled manufacturer might be $140. Farm labourers were only earning $49 a month. So that's relative, isn't it? I mean, and what I mean by that is, please don't think that $49 equivalent in today's money, because obviously they wouldn't have been able to afford anything. It is relative, but it is still compared to the average 
obviously three times lower. So <clears throat> we then got social problems. So people who were wealthy in America were extremely rich, but only few people shared in this prosperity. So only 5% of the American population owned a third of the wealth, while 42% of the populations were living below the poverty line. Now, if you're a mathematically or a number-minded person, you can probably find that quite easy to visualize. I'm not at all, so it really helps me to draw these out when we talk about this. So if we imagine that this is all of the wealth in America and we split it into thirds, please don't measure this, imagine, imagine that's perfect thirds, one, um, five percent of the population owned this much wealth, okay, so the other third, the other two thirds are owned by 95 percent of the population, so that is a massive, massive amount of money for a tiny group of people so the people who do did well did really well the people who didn't do well were suffering and 42 percent of the population are living below the poverty line so that's nearly half of the people and the poverty line if you don't know what that means is if you are below the poverty line you are living in poverty so 42 percent of the population are living in poverty in the 1920s so this image of the boom that we might have in our in our heads and the roaring 20s and this time of great prosperity is not true for the vast, well, not the vast majority, but a lot of the population, okay? The vast majority, definitely, if we're looking at the 5% um, compared to the 95%. So we're going to have a look at some sources now. Um, what I would encourage you to do is at, at some point, as I'm going down, maybe pause the video and have a look at them yourself and try and see if you've got a notepad next to you or something. Jot down what you get from these about the, the 1920s and the prosperity, because um, I'm not going to have time to go through all of them in a lot of detail, but I will give you a chance for each of them to pause it and have a look at yourself. So I'm going to just do a few annotations on them. But like I said, pe please feel free to add your own as well. So we're going to talk about entertainment in the um, in a few videos time or maybe the next video I can't quite remember but it's coming up in the course. Um, now what we can get from this very simple things we can get from source analysis but that doesn't mean that we're not learning something it tells us a lot. So this is obviously um, a film that's going to be shown in the cinema and if it's shown in the cinema, it means that people are going to the cinema. So we know that people are prosperous enough to go and pay for entertainment to go to the cinema, etc. Um, now, the jazz singer. We'll, we'll talk about more about cultural associations with jazz um, later on. But what we notice, what well, what I notice immediately in this is that both of these people in this um, picture are white. Okay. Um, this man is very well dressed, isn't he? He looks quite wealthy. And we can see that this class of people um, are doing well, okay? So I'm going to leave it at that for that one. Let's have a look at other, other um, sources. Now, this is a cartoon one. Now, you, I talked a lot about cartoons. If you've, but if you've watched the um, 1918 to 1939 course, if you're doing that as well, you need to familiarise yourself with who these characters are who prop up a lot in cartoons. So this is Uncle Sam, and he is used in cartoons to represent the USA, as you can probably tell from the outfit that he's wearing. Now, the peak of prosperity. So this is the highest point. Of prosperity right so doing really well and this is really high now this obviously this figure represents ancient Rome so on the ancient, the face of ancient Rome we can see shock because if you know the cultural associations with ancient Rome you know you've got the gladiators the people who are living really well for the time the amount of um, ingenuity and advancements there were during the, the ancient Roman time was there were, there were a lot so this is saying that America is doing even better Uncle Sam is looking down on Rome, isn't he? He's got quite a smug um, expression on his face. The highest standard of living in the history of the world, okay? So just the highest standard in the history of the world. That shows us a lot about what, sort of how America is viewed. 
And what I would also like to point out is propaganda like this, and we'll see this when we look at immigration again a little bit further on in the course. It's, it's obviously America is trying to show off here because they have got very high standard of living and they are doing very well in the 1920s. But if you're in an if you're in a European country who's just been suffering from the war and you're looking to increase your standard of living and you see this, you might think, hmm, I know where I might go. And then therefore America starts to get more immigrants. And that they kind of did want to attract people there, but not in the scale that they actually ended up doing, which we'll look at in the immigration video. Okay, so that's a few points on that one. Then we've got radio set production and use from 1922 to 1930. So as the boom is really um, happening there. So we've got percentage of homes with radios is our red and then radio set production is our blue. So we can see that production is obviously going higher and higher all the time. Oh, well, it's dropping slightly at points, but we can see here that the percentage of homes with radios increases on a steady curve. Um, that is because people have access to them, they have, uh, in terms of money, they've got the money to be able to buy them, they've got the free time to be able to sit and listen to the radio to enjoy this entertainment, and uh, we can see here as the demand increases, we can see people are buying them, so the production goes up massively, and then it sort of tails off a little bit, but production carries on going, and in the end, the amount of homes with them um, exceeds the amount that has been made. And the reason here that we see the drop, I'll just do that in different colors so you can see it a bit better. The reason here that we see the drop in 1929, and we should be able to infer this from our knowledge already, is because that was the Wall Street crash. And then production peters off in the 1920s, but people still continue to buy them. Okay, so that, that shows that some people can, some people, uh, not necessarily everybody, but some people do have access to be able to buy and um, listen to radios. So again, we've got just an advert here for a washing machine. And again, we see in the adverts generally use people who look like their consumer to try and get them to buy it. So we've obviously got an, again, sort of a, a well off white woman in this advert. So they are um, trying to attract well off white women because as we'll look at when we go through women, um, they are the ones who are doing the housework predominantly in this time. However, we've got men walking around the streets who are wearing signs saying, wanted a decent job, family man, and they're walking around, they're obviously unemployed, so we can infer that unemployment um, is not non-existent in this time. We did say that one of the conditions for a boom to be happening is low levels of unemployment, but obviously not everybody is employed. So the wealth gap here widening with age. So we have ages 30 to 40, 40 to 50 and 50 to 60. If you are black, you are earning on an average of 13,439. White, you have 98,139. By the time we get to 50 to 60, and you can see how the, the um, age there, as, it, as we go get older, the wealth actually goes down. And we might be able to infer from this the work that the um, black people are doing. So if they are doing manual labor, such as farming, which they were in this time, their wealth is going to drop down quite a lot because they are not able to do that manual labor um, at, that, at that age, okay? So we can see here that the white people have stopped working, but they haven't gone from, they've stopped working sort of at this time and then they're earning nothing, they're still, massively ahead of their black counterparts at that time so opportunity is not afforded to everybody and I think that's one of the main takeaways from this part of this course um opportunity and inequality is one of the titles of this course and opportunities are afforded to you if you are old immigrants uh, wasps really in this time which will again we'll go into old immigrants and wasps when we look at immigration and the kkk um but equal opportunity does not exist. We have massive inequality and this, this graph demonstrates that beautifully. 
Okay, so like I said, please feel free to have a look at these sources in more detail on your own. Um, and we'll go on then to have a look at the specifics and how those inequalities kind of get more entrenched when we get organisations such as the KKK and this, this um, discrimination against not just black people but immigrants from and communists and anarchists and so on and so forth. So thank you very much for tuning into this video and I will see you in the next one.